What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. Today, we're gonna be discussing group breaks, specifically how they work, how you can buy into them, what you get from them, all sorts of stuff like that. So obviously, I've been breaking a lot. It's something I really love to do, I enjoy it. We have great streams and it's just a great time. Uh, if you're interested in getting into some for yourself, of course, you'd wanna watch this video and you know, learn more about them. But the link in the description down below, that'll tell you where you can go to find my site and in the shop tab on my site, pacmansportscards.com, you can buy into group breaks as well as the other link to my YouTube channel, Pac-Man Breaks, where I'll be doing most of my break stuff once I fully phase it off this channel. But pretty much with group breaks, there's a few things involved. There's the breaker, which in this case would probably be me. There's the participants or the people who joined in and say there's 30 teams, there'd be 30 of them. Or say, you know, one person bought three teams and there may be, you know, less. And of course, we're all live. We're in a live stream together and I'm ripping a box, say this one. This one is already open, obviously. The pack, there's packs inside it, but it's empty. I just put some base cards for a demonstration later on in the video. But, so what happens is I open this box and all the cards we pull for them, they go to whoever bought the team. So say John bought the Mavericks, then he gets all the Mavericks cards. In this case, it'd be Luca. Or say he bought a random spot and he landed the Knicks, he would get all the Kevin Knox. You know, it was pretty simple. And I might have a full case, I might have a half case, I might have a mixer, or in that case it would be, say, you know, one prism, one court kings, uh, one national treasures, you never know. But I'm opening all these packs, the cards go to people who bought in. So in order to get into a group break, you have to buy in, and you know, comparing it to a hobby box, it'd be much cheaper. Obviously, say hobby boxes cost $100 and 12 box case, you know, buying those boxes could be pricey, a cheaper option would be to buy into a group break spot. Now group breaks this year are pretty expensive because wax is pretty expensive. So boxes that are costing, you know, three, four hundred dollars, spots into a break with them could cost a hundred dollars. But notice how it's you know a fraction of the price. Although, you know, this year's still expensive. In the future, maybe it's much cheaper. And that's kind of how it's been in years past. So obviously, say I rip this box and I pull cards for every single team except the heat. The heat don't get any cards, and that's how it works. You aren't guaranteed anything in group breaks. You are you know, buying in for a chance to pull something nice, right? So let's do a little demonstration here. So say I had this box and I have this little thing standing it up, but say I, I, I bought this box and I sold it as a group break and you guys bought in, right? So these two packs I filled with base cards for the demonstration. So I take this first pack out, I rip the pack. And of course I had one of these beautiful first off the line 1819 prison boxes lying around because this is like my favorite product but here are the cards for the break so i pull um, you know chris middleton right obviously an actual break is not all base cards but i found some base cards lying around through them in. so the bucks now have a card celtics have a card magic right and kings every single team you see here has gotten a card we didn't see say the grizzlies the grizzlies if this was the whole break they get no cards now say you know, we pulled the Giannis next and then we pulled the uh, Brooke Lopez, and all through the Bucks, the Bucks get all three cards. Now you multiply that into a grander scale with hits, with numbered cards, inserts, stuff like that, and you can see that, you know, that's how kind of how it works. So say I open the next pack, right? So now the Spurs got a card, Hornets, now the Grizzlies got a card. So obviously they're not always gonna be base cards. I just did this for quick demonstration, but all the teams that didn't have a card here, they go home, if these were all the cards in the break, and obviously if there was just these cards, it'd be a much cheaper break, but they would not get any cards shipped. You only get cards if they're pulled for your team. Now you can get teams several ways. So now that we've done this little demonstration, I really wanted to just show off these beautiful packs, which are, I, mean, I just had this sitting on my little shelf because this is a be beautiful pack, awesome year. Should have put Jaren on the front or maybe Trey. I'm biased, but so that's how it, it works. Once again, you have to be comfortable with the fact that I could walk away with nothing or I could walk away with, you know, Luca base and say I got two teams and the other one was the Grizzlies. I get both these cards. So you get only the cards pulled for your team. And that just depends on what boxes were in the, I guess, in the pool, what cards were pulled. Anyone who's part of this hobby knows that there's no guarantee in, in terms of anything, really. You could buy a hobby box and you could walk away with and I've personally done this many times, walk away with five, $10 worth of cards and I spent $120. Or I walked away with $240 worth of cards and I spent $90. So it's all about risk. There's a lot of formats. There's random teams, there's pick your team, there's you know, drafts, there's serial number breaks. 
So random teams, pretty much, I would sell on my site, and there's you know 30 spots. Everyone buys a spot right before the break, live, of course, so you guys would see it. I would random all the teams and all the names, pair them together, and you now have a random team. So someone could get the Mavericks, and someone could get the Grizzlies, someone could get the Hornets, someone could get the Pistons. And those, all, those teams all go out, and you get the cards for your team. So random teams is pretty much pretty straightforward. Teams are assigned randomly. You get all the cards for your team. Pick your team means that I would have, once again, all 30 NBA teams or 32 NFL teams, and you get to choose your team, and they're priced accordingly. So in random teams, all the teams would be priced you know, at the same price point. So say every single team in a random team break was $100. Or say every single team in a pick your team break, say the Mavericks were $200, but a team like the Hornets, if I had a Hornets card right here, say they didn't have any good rookies, they might just be $20. So you pick your team, and obviously the greater teams go for more money because, you know, based on the boxes and the product, if it was, say, 18, 19 Prism, we know that the Mavericks have good cards in there. We know that the Hawks, we know the Grizzlies might. So those teams would be more expensive. So you're kind of, the price is determined by the boxes that are in the break, and of course the team you're choosing and the rookies that belong to that team, or the vets like LeBron, someone like that. In a draft, common way is, you know, we pull these, say we just two cards in the break, and there's two guys in the break. Whoever gets to, at the top of the list, gets to pick this one or this one first. He chooses. Second guy picks next one. So they, say there's 10 cards, and, um, you know, I, uh, you know, say me, Ryan's at the top. And I like Luca. I pick Luca. So Luca's now off the board, and next person goes up. And say he likes Ja. He picks Ja. Say a third person wanted Ja or Luca. They've already been picked, so you can't do it. Just like a fantasy draft, just like the NBA draft or MLB draft or something like that. Based on what's on the board, you can pick. There's you know obviously greater stuff on the board, but based on the order that's assigned randomly, of course, they get to choose. And there's also serial numbers. So say I have this Kyler Murray, one of 150. It can go by any part of the serial number. It could be the, you know, I do 99 different, left. it's always left-hand side, by the way. Say I do 99 different spots. That means that 99 ones, every single person gets assigned a number. If that left hand left hand number is your number, then it goes to you. Let's say we do the number closest to the little slash here, and I had number one. I get this card. If there's a one of one pulled, I get this card. If it was nine of 150, whoever has number nine would get it. And in this case, there's only 10 spots because we're doing you know one um, one through 10 or one through nine, something like that. And pretty simple. Serial number can be fun, but once again, when you're doing that based on how many... You, if you're doing it, you know, one through 99 or one through uh, nine or 10, right? Cause if it's zero in some cases, then there's less spots. But once again, this can be plenty of formats, different breakers get creative. And um, I've seen, for example, I pulled the Zion in a group break. I paid pretty small amount for the, for the spot. And I was like, Hmm, it's prism. I like it. Why not buy into the spot? Now all the teams were kind of, some teams were combined. So say there's 30 NBA teams, but the, Nets and the Knicks don't have good cards. They might get, or good rookies, or at least a high chance at them. They might get paired up and they're one team. Instead of 30 spots, there's 25 spots. And in the break I was in, there was, say, 25 spots. They paired up a few teams together that had you know lower chances of high pulls. And that Zion was actually his own spot. So Zion was not with the Pelicans. The Pelicans did not include Zion. They had Nikhil. They had uh, Jackson Hayes. Lonzo Ball, Brendan Ingram, but they didn't have Zion. And I actually hit that Zion spot, so I got all the Zions. And I got a big stack of valuable cards, and it was a huge win. And I spent, say, say I spent 80 on that spot, and I came out of that with $1,000 worth of value. So that's the potential of root breaks. So everything pulled goes to the pers the team, um, that and the person who bought it gets it. Pretty simple. So once again, it could be half cases, where, say, a 12-box case of Prism. I could do a full case of 12. I could do half case of six i could do a one box break a two box break a three or four it's really you know very flexible but once again it's a very simple thing at the same time it could be a mixer where i chose prism i choose optic i choose revolution and i want to put them all into one break and we break those boxes together so lots of different ways it can be done the cards once they're pulled are you know packaged up and they're shipped out to everyone who bought in and um it's pretty yeah once again very straightforward from there so then you get your cards and that's the that concludes the break for the most part, once again, the biggest thing that can deter people is that you may not get any cards. But once again, you got to risk it if you want the biscuits, I always say. And you can hit huge stuff. I've seen people pull just the biggest monsters ever. The Zion 1 of 1 from Prism, which is one of the biggest cards in existence right now. 
for especially for Zion. That was pulled in the group break. So they're ripping tons of products, so you know those big hits are in there, as opposed to one hobby box where you might have a one in twelve shot at a big, big, uh, big pull, right? So a lot of fun. I like group breaks a lot now. I think that they're really great. They're it's just a joy. We've been doing them for a while, and I think we all having a great time doing them. And um, if you're interested in buying into these, once again, my website will be linked down below, Pac-Man Sports Cards. If you want to follow me on Instagram for more information on them, Pac-Man Cards. Twitter is that too. And of course, subscribe to my channel, Pac-Man Breaks, which, which will also be linked right at the top of the description. So you might be asking, well, say I bought into a break. When does this take place? They always take place once they're full. So I have to sell all 30 or all 25 spots or all 10 spots if it's, you know, say serial number or hit draft. And... Then once it's full, I'll post on the schedule tab. So if you go to the you know top of my website, there'll be shop, there'll be break rules, there'll be break schedule, schedule shows. So once it's sold out, give a little bit of time and then check back and that break will then be posted. So it'll say break. So you bought into a one box break of noir. It'll say noir one box break. And if I've already done three of them, this would be number four. So it'd be you know noir one box break number four or one box noir number four, something like that. It'll say date, which could be say, you know, December 25th, and then time could be, you know, 3 p.m., 10 p.m., and then where it'll say either, you know, my channel now, which is Pac-Man, or Pac-Man Breaks. My goal will be to have everything on Pac-Man Breaks, but um, if I don't transition over fast enough, it could say that, but uh, yeah, that'll, that'll just give you all your information, and then tune in during that time. I'll be live on YouTube, and you can watch the uh, watch the stream, and of course, good luck. So that's kind of the gist of it. It's very simple. If you have any other questions, you can ask me, but the main gist is, I, the breaker, have boxes. I rip the boxes. You guys, the participants, you buy in. You're now joined and you get a team or teams based on how many spots you buy, either randomly or by pick your team based on the format of the break that I choose. And you get the cards for your team. That could be zero cards. That could be every card in the break, right? So it's a risk, just like packs, just like anything. Whoops, I dropped the Drew Lock, but it's a lot of fun. So. I mean, if you were in a 2017 football mixer and say that box of nat of a uh, first off the line prism was in there and that Mahomes was pulled and you had the Chiefs, you get you get the Chiefs, you get Mahomes. You were got that Zion spot that I was in, you get that Zion. Same with Drew Locke, same with Kyler. So very interesting, very fun. And if you're interested in getting into it, once again, my web website is linked down below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And of course, good luck. Hopefully we can pull a lot of monsters for you guys. And I hope to see you guys in some future streams and breaks. Thanks a lot for all the support. Love you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.